हेलो एंड वेलकम टू मिनी मेडिकोज टुडे आवर टॉपिक इज एपिजियोटमी सो व्हाट इज एपिजियोटमी इट इज ए सर्जिकल इनसीजन दैट वी गिव ऑन पैरिनियम एंड पोस्टीरियर वेजाइनल वॉल ड्यूरिंग द सेकंड स्टेज ऑफ लेबर सो व्हाई वी आर गिविंग दिस इनसीजन हाउ वी गिव इट एंड हाउ द वूंड दैट इज क्रिएटेड बाय एपिजियोटमी इज Mm, stitched we will discuss all these things in the upcoming slides so what are the objectives objectives of episiotomy giving episiotomy so what is it mean why we are actually giving episiotomy uh, so first one is to enlarge the vaginal introitus so that the passes through which the baby is going to pass is can be enlarged to facilitate easy and safe delivery of the fetus second one is to minimize over stretching and rupture of the perineal muscle and fascia so if the uh, vagina or the birth canal is narrow and the baby is big it will stretch the wall wall of vaginal introitus and cause its damage so to reduce the stress and strain on the fetal head episiotomy is given what are the indications for episiotomy so where is indication for episiotomy are first one is in elastic or rigid perineum of the mother anticipating perineal tear so when the uh, possibility of perineal tear are present we give episiotomy in case of operative delivery previous perineal surgery if the mother have underwent any previous perineal surgery that lead to scar on the perineum there are more chances of uh, damage or tear to the perineum that's uh, so that we give episiotomy there also uh, uh, mostly in primary 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 the uh, the female who is going to be mother for the first time we prefer episiotomy what are the common indications threatened perineal injury in primary gravida primary gravida uh, g1 who is going to be mother for the first time uh, when there is re- when rigid perineum is present or if somehow we have to de- do force up force up delivery or if the presentation is breech presentation or if there is occipito posterior or face delivery is present we give episiotomy in all these conditions uh, what is the timing of episiotomy so when we we have to give episiotomy or uh, in what stage of labor we have to give episiotomy so we have to see when the bulging perineum is bulging thin during the contraction just prior to the crowning crowning is what when the head of the baby just come out that is crowning so when the perineum is bulged thinned out so uh, and crowning is present we give episiotomy during forceps delivery it is made after the application of blades we introduce the blades inside uh, the vagina and put them around the head of the baby and then we give episiotomy theek okay? hai Uh, if done uh, uh, so what uh, will happen if we, we done episiotomy early or if we done episiotomy when the perineum is not thinned out or crowning has not done so excessive blood loss will occur theek okay? hai if it, we done it late what it will it fail to prevent the invisible laceration of the perineal body so the purpose is not fulfilled if we are late in giving episiotomy so in this image you can see two episiotomy two techniques of episiotomy one is mid midline episiotomy when the incision is given the midline second one is medio lateral episiotomy medio lateral incision the episiotomy is given in the medio lateral direction what are they and why one is preferred over the other we will discuss uh, this uh, later on what are the advantages of giving episiotomy what are the advantages to the mother and what are the advantages to the fetus a clear controlled incision is easy to repair and heal and it heal better so uh, 
suppose if we don't give episiotomy and the tear occur to the perineum by itself it will cause more damage to the mother but if we give giving the incision by ourselves uh, with this scissor it will be a clear incision and it will be easy to stitch that clear incision okay <coughs> second one is episiotomy reduce the duration of second stage of labor third one it reduce the trauma to the muscles so perineal muscle what are the benefits uh, to the fetus it minimize intracranial injuries how because it widens the birth canal or the passes through through which the baby have to pass so it minimize the intracranial injuries or chances of intracranial injuries to the baby now what are the types of episiotomy first one is mediolateral episiotomy mediolateral episiotomy that why we saw in previous image this image see here what is this is mediolateral this is the birth canal so see where we are giving episiotomy bone this is mediolateral episiotomy and this is median episiotomy okay mediolateral the incision is made downward and outward from the midpoint of forchet either to the right or to the left it is directly directed diagonally in the straight line about 25 cm away from the anus second one is median episiotomy in this case episiotomy is given in the median plane third one is lateral episiotomy fourth one is j shaped episiotomy so what are the merits and demerits of median over mediolateral episiotomy these are the main two that we give during uh, uh, birth so in median episiotomy what was you remember what was the median this is the birth canal and this was the median episiotomy in this type of episiotomy muscles are not cut no if the muscles are not cut blood loss will be very less it can be repaired very easily post operative comfort to the mother or to patient is maximum healing is superior wound disruption is rare so after giving episiotomy and uh, repairing the episiotomy the chances of wound uh, disruption or the chances of reopening of the wound are less in case of median episiotomy so remember this slide is very important for you you uh, note it down and remember this slide very clearly dyspareunia is rare in mediolateral episiotomy what happened it is relatively safe from rectal involvement of the ex extension uh, you know one thing median episiotomy have less blood loss less damage and is safer but we prefer mediolateral episiotomy why because this is the birth canal and this is the anus that is present behind the birth canal so if we give median episiotomy and somehow due to any reason if it get extended it will involve the muscles of the anus so patient will have that will be very dangerous and patient will have post operative incontinence a lot of other problems what uh in case of medio lateral episiotomy if somehow it get extended or more damage occur due to unexperienced doctor it can it will never involve the anal sphincters okay this is the only only benefit of medio lateral episiotomy over median episiotomy okay you understand so what are the demerits again same extension if occur may involve the rectum okay sphincters not suitable for manipulative delivery or in abnormal presentation or position as such it is its use is selective so if uh, mal presentation abnormal presentation is present we can't give median episiotomy it is of no use for us so what are the abnormal presentation we will uh, discuss it in the another video theek okay? hai
मीडियो लिटल लिटल एपिजियोटमी हैज फॉलोइंग डीमेरिट्स अपोजिशन ऑफ द टिश्यू इज नॉट सो गुड ब्लड लॉस इज मोर एज कंपेयर टू मीडियम पोस्ट ऑपरेटिव डिस्कम्फर्ट इज मोर इंक्रीज इंसिडेंस ऑफ वूड डिसरप्शन डिस्पिरोनिया इज कंपेटिवली मोर सो I, as I said previously, only merit of medial lateral episiotomy over median episiotomy is that if it somehow get extended, never involve the rectum or anus or the rectal sphincters. Okay. Uh, with the help of uh, images, we will try to understand median. See where we are giving giving incision. This is the incision of median episiotomy. so this is the word birth canal and here is the anus and rectum will also be present proximal to it so if it get extended it will involve definitely going to involve the rectum and the rectal sphincters so this second one is medio lateral episiotomy this is our medio lateral episiotomy if get extended will never going to involve the rectum this is J shaped episiotomy it will also not involve the rectum so what are the various steps of medio lateral episiotomy how we actually give episiotomy step 1 preliminaries things that should be present before we give or before we start giving episiotomy the perium is thoroughly stabbed with the antiseptic lotion and draped properly so you have to clean the peri uh, perineum with povidone iodine iodine to prevent the chances of infection okay we have second we have to give local anesthesia obviously we are going to give a cut to the uh, mother so we have to anesthetize that part through which we have to give an uh, episiotomy the perineum so we give 10 ml of 1% solution of lignocaine step second in season how in season is given given we will uh, try to understand it with the help of a image uh, see the first image here you can see we are giving anesthesia by probing the syringe in different directions okay with the help of 10 ml of 1% lignocaine 10 ml of 1% lignocaine solution then we introduce our two finger into the mother vagina this finger you can see index and the middle finger hai na then we <coughs> sorry introduce our scissor in and place the scissor in between our two fingers and when the perineum is fully stretched we give cut here and this will give medio lateral episiotomy so see this is the episiotomy scissor it has curve that help us to give the episiotomy structures that are cut during episiotomy are posterior vaginal wall first superficial and the deep transverse perineal muscle bulbo spongius muscle and the part of levator ani other fascia that is covering these muscles is also cut transverse perineal branches of pudendal vessel and nerves are cut these vessels lead to the bleeding during episiotomy subcutaneous tissue and skin so why these structure are important because we have to stitch them in layers during the closer of episiotomy wound so these slides are no are not much used to us so repair repair steps how do we are going to repair the episiotomy wound so repair is done in lithotomy position a good light source should be present we clean the wound with antiseptic solution then blood clots are removed from the vagina and the wound area then the patient is draped properly draped matlab clean with the help of uh ovidon iodine or any other uh, antiseptic solution if the uh, repair field is obscured by oozing of blood from the uh, from our vessels a vagina pack must be inserted 
and is placed high up repair so repair this slide is also very important pay attention here repair is actually done in three layers a lot of times uh, if you uh, attend the labor room you will see few people are stitching the episiotomy wound in single layer that is wrong actually we have to stitch it in three layers following three layers are stitched the principle to be followed are perfect hemostasis should be achieved otherwise it will lead to hematoma formation to obliterate the dead spaces that can accumulate the blood we have to give sutures without tension so that uh, so that when the wound get healed it will not lead to dirty scarring layers the repair is to be done in the following order first we have to stitch vaginal mucosa and submucosal tissue okay the first layer that you have to stitch is vaginal mucosa so you stitch vaginal mucosa and submucosa tissue then second layer we have to stitch is the muscle perineal muscles okay superficial deep deep perineal muscle and bulbous spongiosis then third and at the last you have to stitch the skin and subcutaneous tissue okay look here uh, in the step 1 we stitch what mucosa and submucosa of the vagina in the second step we are stitching the muscle of the perineum muscles of the perineum and then at last we are stitching the skin and subcutaneous tissue look how clean the wound is repeat steps vaginal mucosa is sutured first first suture is placed just at or above the apex of tear you can see here at the tip we have to place the first suture then we have to stitch uh, thereafter the vaginal wall are opposed by interrupted sutures this is very important sutures in all three layers are different in vaginal mucosa and submucosa we give interrupted sutures with polyglycolic acidic suture get get zero chromic suture are used suture should include the deep tissue to obliterate that any dead space that can lead to accumulation of blood if left unsutured continuous suture may cause puckering and shortening of the posterior vaginal wall so why we are giving interrupted suture because if we give continuous sutures they can lead to retraction of the vaginal wall to avoid it we are giving uh, going to give interrupted sutures one suture then cut the thread another suture then again cut the stretch we are giving to going to give inter interrupted sutures uh, when we stitch vaginal mucosa and submucosa so also you should pay attention uh, not to damage the rectum post operative care we put the dressing on the wound uh, apply heat or ice pack or analgesic like ibu uh, ibuprofen is given uh, ambulance should be avali made available for for to shift the patient to whom removal of stitches is done on the 6th day after applying episiotomy immediate what are the uh, complications that can occur during giving episiotomy extension of the uh, incision to involve rectum uh, as we discussed earlier if we are giving median episiotomy if it uh, get extended somehow it can involve the rectum that is very dangerous complication hematoma formation infection infection of the wound can be occur so you have to take all the septic precaution so that the chances of infection can be limited infection can lead to throbbing pain in the perineum rise of temperature wound area look moist red and swollen theek okay? hai and offensive or foul smelling discharge start occurring from the vagina or from the wound so what treatment we have to give if infection occur facilitate drainage of pus 
लोकल ड्रेसिंग विद एंटीसेप्टिक पाउडर और ऑइंटमेंट एम जी एस ओ फोर मैगनीम सल्फेट कंप्रेशन और एप्लीकेशन ऑफ हीट टू द एरिया टू रिड्यूस अडीमा एंड पेन एंड आई वी एंटीबायोटिक सिस्टेमिक एंड आई वी एंटीबायोटिक शुड बी स्टार्ट एज वी सून एज वी सस्पेक्ट द वूड इन्फेक्शन बिकॉज इफ ट्रीटमेंट इज डिलेड इट कैन लीड टू वूड डिस्टरप्शन वूड डिसेंस कैन अकर If the uh, episiotomy infection uh, left uh, neglected, wound can reopen and then it will be very difficult for us to stitches again. And after wound descent, when it get healed, it leave to large dirty scar. Injury to the anal sphincter will cause, as I told earlier, incontinence of flatus or feces. So, uh, think how. uncomfortable it will be for the patient recto vaginal fistula it can form fistula it, it is the tract that formed between vagina and the rectum so you will see patient will have passes of feces or fecal material through the vagina necrotizing fasciitis is a rare and very dangerous complication of episiotomy Uh, it occur in the women who are diabetic or who are immunocompromised remote complications rare complication or uh, the long term complication dyspareunia dyspareunia painful intercourse chances of perineal laceration in subsequent labor so episiotomy is a wound and when the wound get healed it leads to scar formation and scar formation and scar will never have strength of normal tissue so in the next pregnancy it can lead to laceration of that wound scar endometriosis so this is important term it is the presence of endometrial tissue outside the endometrial cavity so endometrial uh, tissue can come and as in this scar that leads to endometritis it leads to lot of pain so this was the short topic of episiotomy thank you very much for watching this video please like and subscribe our channel